for anyone. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, hey. Welcome. <laughs> caught, caught myself by surprise. Welcome once go. again, Talk and Fight fans. Uh, it's Friday in our part of the world. And in the evening, we've had uh, snow for the past couple of days. We live in Canada, but we welcome you to our show from wherever you are in the world. Another great episode of Neil the Deal, where we're profiling uh, fighters from across the Americas, North America, South America, Central America. And today, uh, we're going to continue uh, in North America and profile a great fighter out of Philadelphia, Tommy Lockhart. Good evening, Graham. Nice to see you tonight, buddy. How's everything going? You all right? Warm? Staying warm over there? Yes, I do have a sweater on today, but uh, yes, in general, uh, staying warm inside. Yeah, that's it. Okay, guys, out here where we are, out in uh, the big uh, white north here in Toronto, we've been snowing for a couple of days, guys. So around the world, if you guys are warm and you're getting some sun, I wish I was out there with you, but I'm glad you're here with us tonight anyways. I, I got to appreciate that. So Thanks for coming out, uh, Neil the Deal show fans and the talk and fight fans. I want to thank you again, as usual, for the uh, all the likes, the shares, the subscriptions, uh, all the comments have been really fantastic. And like uh, Graham was saying, we've been talking about the Americas uh, in the last uh, 10 days or so, 8, 10 days. So we're going to continue that with our uh, number five fighter that I'm going to do of the uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Philadelphia fight region, which is one of the world's most well-known uh, fighting meccas, I guess they would call it. Uh, the guys that come out of Philly, Graham, as we all know, are very, very tough. They come from tough streets. They come from tough upbringings, and they're tough people. So got to like it, you know, right? You look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're pretty tough. You know what I mean? So uh, any, any, anybody out of, you know, that Pennsylvania, that blue-collar, uh, you know. I thought, I thought you were going to say broad, broad Street bullies there, actually. And the Broad Street Bullies, of course. We were going to talk about those guys in a minute, too. I was just going to say, so what about the Broad Street Bullies? There's another <laughs> bunch of guys that are pretty serious, if you know what I mean, though. So, yeah, so we, we talked about a bunch of guys earlier on this week. Uh, I hope you guys were looking at some of the, the fights that we had mentioned with uh, some of these fantastic fighters out of Philly. So we'll just go over the list that, that, I've, uh, that I've decided is going to be my top five for Philly. So, again, we had uh, Bernard Hopkins as number one. We had Joe Fraser as number two, Larry Holmes as number three, uh, Jersey Joe Walcott as number four, and we're going to take this individual, uh, who I really didn't know a lot about, guys. I did hear something of him just in reading and passing, you know, stuff about him, but I never really investigated who he was, what he was all about, and uh, because of this Philly situation we've been doing this week, it's really interesting. So now we're, we're going to talk about him. His name's uh, Tommy Logren. Tommy Logren. They used to call him uh, his his nickname back in the day, and it still is. He has statues, I understand, Graham, uh, in his hometown in uh, in Philly, there in front of the church, uh, in the in the parks and stuff. And uh, they call him the Phantom of Philly. And uh, he's he's a he's an amazing guy, the Phantom of Philly. So it's, he's a very interesting individual. So guys, kick back, enjoy yourselves, and we'll go through this uh, with you for a quick little bit here. So. He was born Thomas Patrick Longren, born uh, November 29th, 1902, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He died July 7th, 1982, in Altoona, Pennsylvania. So I guess that's a town outside or a small community or something in, in Pennsylvania. And he was uh, 79 years old at the time of his passing. So RIP, Tommy, thanks a lot for the great career. That was awesome, man. Uh, Checking you out today was really cool. The pictures, I watched a couple fights of yours today, and they were great. Awesome. So we're going to go through that again later on in the in the show, guys. So keep an ear out for the uh, notable fights coming up. All right, so he fought in two divisions. He fought in the light heavyweight division as well as the heavyweight division. He was one of seven children in his family. And uh, he was known, like, right off the hop when he became a, a boxer. He's been known uh to have, have to have had really really good footwork of the day his defense was amazing his uh swift accurate punching was was really good i noticed that in the fights i watched today like punching was amazing and i i read where today where a lot of modern day boxers look at his techniques eh, Graham, and utilize his his actual technique of the day is something that they're utilizing today 
So he's, he's still a relevant individual when it comes to, uh, you know, giving back to the boxing community, even what, 30, 40 years after his death type of thing, right? So that that was pretty interesting. He beat some really uh, some really heavy duty fighters of the time. He he beat a guy named Gene Tunney. I don't know if you know who he is, guys, but he was a fantastic fighter. Another guy that I remember as a my dad used to talk about this guy was Harry Greb. Harry Greb. He was he was like a really hard puncher. I know that uh, that Logren fought him like four or five times. Like I think the first fight he ever had was against Harry Greb, but. Uh, Harry Greb was a really hard guy to deal with. He was he was not an easy individual of the time to to deal with because he had such heavy hands. So this guy fought him. He also he beat he beat he, I'm pretty sure he beat those guys. He he beat Max Bear. Okay, this guy wow. Wow. He, beat, he beat Max Bear and he beat uh, James J Braddock, the Cinderella man, and that was one of the fights I watched today. And he beat him. So I was like, wow. Okay. So now we're uh, now we're talking. Eventually, he got a title. He got a he got a shot at the title, I guess, against a guy named Primo Camara. All right, this is a really interesting story, Graham. Apparently, uh, the only way that Logren could get the fight was to ensure that he threw the fight, unless he was able to knock the guy out. So he wasn't going to win on any kind of a decision or split decision or mandatory points or whatever. The only way he was to win the fight, they he was told that was you have to knock the guy out. Or you're losing the fight and he had to agree to that right for the fight to go on at that time so in 1972 he was interviewed by a, a some reporter or something about it and he said it was no question that he actually won the fight like if it was if it wasn't really fixed i guess then he would have won that fight so he kind of he, he be chuckled about it i mean he needed the money back in the day and right and the, and the other crazy part about that whole thing was when he fought this guy, Graham, this was really crazy. Guys, you're not going to believe this. He was 84 pounds lighter than Camara. <laughs> what? Did I just hear that? Okay, so the guy was in a fight against a guy who's 84 pounds bigger than him. That is insane when you think about that. So that, Graham, was a, a record which wasn't broken until 2005 when uh, Nikolai Valuev fought John Ruiz and the weight differential was 86 and a quarter pounds between those two fighters. So I, I don't know, man, you can ask any pro, you can ask, like is Floyd Mayweather going to fight a guy who's 85 pounds heavier than him? Does that make any sense? What, like, does that make any, nobody does that. At least not anymore. So well, uh, I'm I'm just thinking of Butterbean, but uh... Butterbean, <laughs> <laughs> Butterbean. Oh yeah, I remember that guy with the American flag pants on. Yeah, I, I that guy that was a big boy, right? That guy was huge. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I'm I'm just thinking there must have been some great weight differential between the guys he fought. I'm just thinking. Well, I I, there, I guess there was. Maybe they're not accounted in uh, in uh, in the record books, so to speak. Because I know that's that's the record right there. Is value F versus Ariz at 86 and a quarter pounds, and before that it was this individual, Mr. Logren, at 80 or 86 and a quarter pounds, and Logren at 84 pounds, right? But it just it just that's that's an astronomical uh, like number. That'd be like a guy like 120 fighting a guy that's 225. Think about that. And, and he actually went 15 rounds with the guy and beat him up, and and, and he did, couldn't knock him out because he wasn't wasn't big enough, I guess. Right? That's freaking nuts, man. When I, when I you think about something like that. All right, so guys, check check out these totals. These totals impressed me, uh, Graham. Check this out. So uh, pro fights, total fights, 169 fights total. <laughs> like, okay, and you know how many rounds that was? He fought 1,179 rounds. So I was like, oh, wow. Like, this guy was fighting a lot. At 169 fights total, he won 121 fights. Now, the other crazy part about it, Graham, is he only had 14 KOs in 121 wins. 11%, that's his uh, knockout percentage, 11%. That's the lowest percentage I've seen 
so far uh, since we've been uh, we've been on the air here with everybody. So I don't know. The guy obviously just went the distance all the time and won fights. It, that, obviously, because he didn't knock many people out. So so he had 32, 32 losses. All right, uh, fourteen draws and two no contests. But in back in those days, thirty two losses probably wasn't that much, Graham. Really, um, you know. They're fighting every two, three weeks or something in those days, like we were thinking about, or at once a month or something, like, you know what I mean? Like, even if he fought once a month for 10 years, that's only 120 fights. So he'd have to be once a month for, like, I don't know, 13 years straight every month? I don't that's know. Incredible. Yeah, it's like, it's like, guys don't do that. Like, guys fight two times a year, once a year. Like, if a guy fights four times a year, that's like, whoa, you know, wow, this guy can handle it, you know what I mean? So, anyways, I'll talk a little bit about his uh, his career, his pro career. Nineteen. This is an interesting one too. Nineteen fifty-seven, he refereed um, a match between Floyd Patterson and a guy named Pete Rackenmack, Rackenmaker, Rackenmeyer, something like that. Pete Rackenmeyer. He was the nineteen fifty-six gold medalist in the heavyweight division. The nineteen fifty-six gold medalist, and uh, it was the first time in the history of the heavyweight championship, and I, I think it still is. It, it's still a record right now. It was the first time that a gold medalist, heavyweight champion, in his pro debut, came out and fought for the world title. You know what I mean? So his first fight after winning the gold medal was for the world title against Logren. That's just, you know what I mean? So nobody's ever done that. If you think about it, and I thought about it, it's like, yeah, Vander Holyfield, he had a few, you know, he had to fight. Everybody has to, there, Mike does everybody. Everybody who was ever in that had to, Zab Judah, everybody. You don't, you don't come out of the Olympics, first fight and go to the, fight for the title, first fight. Like nobody, I've never even heard of that before. So that's another Tommy Logren, which I was like, whoa. So that, that's a pretty interesting one. So he basically, he, he became a really successful guy on Wall Street. Graham, he retired. Uh, I think his career, let's see. I don't have the number on his actual career length, but I know that it was probably retired sometime in the late fifties. I'm assuming, uh, or, or middle fifties, probably. Um, I'm not sure, but anyways, it, apparently in the sixties, he became very successful on wall street. He was uh, an investor on wall street and he was into commodities into sugar and he made a huge fortune on sugar. And, uh, then he just basically retired back to Pennsylvania and uh, he goes to church. He's a very church-going guy. Right on, buddy. That was awesome. Thanks. He goes to church, and he likes the neighborhood, and he, he basically just, you know, gave back to his per, his community and stuff of that sort. And so he, he seemed like a really nice guy, really, like, you know, when you think about it, he he had a good boxing career, and then he became a businessman, and he had a family, and, and then he just settled down. So good for you, Tommy. Right on. And your career, buddy, was, was crazy. So... We're going to talk about the notable fights, guys, just quick. We did talk about them a little bit here already, so we'll just recap that. So Lagren versus Kamara, that was the one where he basically said he had to throw the fight. Uh, that was for the title. Uh, Braddock, right? Lagren versus Braddock, the one I watched, uh, Madison Square Gardens. Uh, that was, let me see, July 18th, 1929. Now, the interesting part about that, Graham, that date, July 1929 that fight was going on Logren versus uh braddock that was the day my father was born wow july 18th 1929 so as my dad was being born in the hospital i guess these guys were fighting at madison square gardens that you know i just was like well okay cool <laughs> interesting little thing so the other one that i, I kind of liked was um the max bear fight i saw that a bit today uh, Lagren versus Max Bear. Um, like the, all, all those fights were great. You know what I mean? The Kamara fight was a unanimous decision loss. Uh, the Braddock fight, he won a unanimous decision again. And in, and in the Bear fight, he, uh, he won a unanimous decision in 10. So as you can see, they were all unanimous decisions, unanimous decisions. And then when I looked through his career, they were all UDs, right? And SDs and MDs, right? So I was like, holy cow. So that's where he, I guess he came up with that 1,179 rounds because he was going basically 15 rounds every fight he fought, basically. So 
What was the guy we watched? What was the guy that had the most again? Was it Mon's own? Uh, I'm not going to say that. It was, Graham, what was it now? We're going to lose our minds here. I'm going to give, give myself yeah. a break. Guys, if you, I know what it is. That, that was like 1,600. That was 1,600 rounds, wasn't it? That's the record, right? Look it up. Maybe we can look it up. Most Can most rounds ever fought. I think it was more than that. Was it twenty six hundred or something crazy? Eighteen uh, hundred rounds. Most rounds ever fought by a professional boxer, basically. Uh, and we it was we we had it. It was uh, it was like an astronomical number. <laughs> well, while it, while I've got it here, uh, I'm just going to scroll down. But the, what popped up was the greatest number of rounds was two hundred and seventy six. In a four hour, four and a half hour fight when Jack Jones beat Patsy Tunney in 1825 before the Queensbury rules were introduced. But let's have a quick look here and see if we can get the. Uh, so there was a boxing match that was 234 rounds long or something. Uh, 276 rounds. 276 rounds? It lasted four and a half hours. <laughs> 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 well, oh, man. I guess those guys needed a shower after that. Uh, but... <laughs> no, you don't uh, have the uh, uh, the. Oh, oh man, no, it's, Neil, come it's, on. it's just uh, slip slip of my mind. But I can uh, if I really put rounds. some brain. Oh, you know, it was uh, was just it was about a couple of weeks ago we were talking about him, and we I couldn't know. believe it. Like if that was actually the real number, right? Remember? Yeah. Longest professional boxing. Now, uh, most talking. rounds fought by a professional boxer. That's wait. Most rounds fought by a professional yeah, no. boxer. Well, Mike Yoko. <laughs> Anyways, guys. All right, so Graham's right. gonna work Let on it. that, I guess. Yeah, you keep talking. Monday, Monday, we're gonna uh, we're gonna end up. Uh, Working on another uh, city, Graham. We're going to move to another city uh, Monday, so that'll be a surprise for everybody. Could be anybody in the world, really, any city in the world. So um, we'll pick the top five out of that city starting next week. And uh, moving forward, we're going to try that. Uh, there's so many great boxing cities around the world. Um, boxers come from all different uh demographics they come from different upbringings they come from different financial situations obviously they come from all over and they all have a story which is an interesting story and that's what i like to bring you guys every night and let you know about some of the guys that i grew up with and some of the guys i, I would have liked to see and grown up with but just keep her going so anyways graham i don't think i think it was around uh i don't know i think it was 1800 if i'm not mistaken Oh man, I'm I'm, I'm going down I'm going down a rabbit hole here. Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't I, I don't get it. For a guy who knows how to use a computer, I don't know. Hey man, I'm gonna leave it up to our viewers. You should call your son. How old is he? He probably knows how to use a computer. Gonna <laughs> we have to we have to jump off anyway because as you know we've got a special guest coming on to our next show. Yes, and uh, and he's nice. had a, a good one. Well, it's going to be a good one, guys out there, all, all the Neil the Deal fight fans and talking fight fans. Montel yep. Griffin I have, is coming on the show tonight yep. with the panel. Yep. So that's, uh, we're going to bop off to those guys and see Montel. So thanks a lot for coming out, guys. Tommy Logren, check him out. Check out his fights. Thanks for the likes, the shares. Keep beeping and bopping and having fun. And don't worry about it. Have yourselves a good weekend. Chill out, relax, have a drink. Stay warm and stay safe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> awesome. That's, that's how we do it out here. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. Absolutely, Graham. Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend, guys. Thanks, Graham. Take care. Awesome. Right Thanks, Neil. <laughs>